NASA gave a critical admonition. Pluto is not what you think. What is NASA suggesting here? Are they alluding to the most recent discoveries from the New Horizons space test, which show that odd things are happening on Pluto's surface? One of the dangerous pictures really shows an object that seems, by all accounts, to be coasting across the outer layer of Pluto. This raises upsetting inquiries with respect to whether some sort of beforehand obscure life exists on this far-off world, or are we managing with a peculiar topographical peculiarity? Pluto might be little, but the narratives it needs to tell are large and full of shocks. When Pluto's planetary status was renounced in 2006, researchers were ignorant of the information from the New Horizons test, which just arrived at Pluto after nine years. From that point forward, we have known that there is something else to this little fellow than was expected. How did astronomers, in reality, come to deny this planet which we have all, in some way, grown up with the status of a genuine planet? This was how things had been after the discovery of various other small planets in the Kuiper Belt. They decided that we really needed a limit for what is a planet and what is a dwarf planet or transneptunian object. Pluto scores points for its size and round shape, but the planet imparts its orbit with a few other objects. The orbit is hence not viewed as clean, and this was precisely the justification for why Pluto was no longer remembered for the list of large planets in the planetary group. Many people on Earth think this is a disgrace, and this decision by space experts caused frustration among the populace worldwide. Pluto, no longer a planet, was a difficult concept for many to imagine. It's insane that this little planet has so many fans on Earth, and there were letters of dissent to NASA. Well-known researchers who stood up for the downgrade, and indeed, even state-run governments received letters from irate residents requesting that Pluto be a planet again. This planet has been with us since the 1930s and has been part of a progression of nine planets. It was as if to advertise this in 2015 when New Horizons sent us the first real picture. The Bard Minor planet showed us its adorable face. Imagine it was the first real picture of Pluto. If you've seen the planet on boards or in school textbooks before, they were creative portrayals, not actual pictures. Pluto denied even the Hubble telescope a clear view of its surface. In a way, New Horizons was permitted to photograph the little one as it truly is. Bright, friendly, incredibly exuberant, and with a heart. From that point forward, the planet on the outer edge of the local planetary group has won over many more fans, and maybe space experts will adjust their perspectives one day, and we will get Pluto back. The first real pictures of Pluto took everyone's breath away. It was a magical moment when the primary information from the New Horizons test arrived at Mission Base Camp in 2015. Everybody present knew that they were about to see a planet for the first time that everyone was somehow familiar with, but had never seen up close. The computers on Earth set up this entrancing picture from large numbers of individual pieces and pixels. What the test uncovered about Pluto was a discovery that totally turned our understanding of this far-off planet on its head. Pluto is substantially more changed, much more organized, and significantly more alive than planetary scientists had previously accepted. Also, the little planet seemed to be covered in landscape features and perhaps much climate peculiarities no one had anticipated either. With each new piece that New Horizons communicated, the hazy, puzzling world in the darkness of the Kuiper Belt became a substantial object that showed so much life that it took researchers' breath away. More and more astonishing topographical marvels opened up before the scientists' eyes. Rather than the normal frigid and cratered wasteland, Pluto turned out to be a dynamic spot with superb chunks of ice, deep gullies, and smooth icy surfaces. It took years for the innumerable measurement data, photographs, and discoveries to make the long journey from Pluto to Earth. Since 2015, we have been astounded repeatedly with new, entrancing viewpoints about Pluto. Who is that walking on Pluto's surface? It's stunning. This moving picture circulated in the media in 2016. But what could you see here? It looks as though an individual is walking across a bizarre honeycomb-shaped snow float. You can actually see ice scenes here, but unlike on Earth, these frozen surfaces are not made of water but of nitrogen and methane. Scientists recognized the unusual object as a dirty chunk of ice which gives off an impression of floating over the surface of the ice-covered plain. The huge block of ice is probably also made of incredibly strong nitrogen. 
These bizarre-looking landforms revealed something very extraordinary to specialists. They now believe that there is a nitrogen reservoir a few kilometers beneath Pluto's surface in which the solid blocks form. Geographical activity in the interior of the planet pushes these blocks upwards, making the honeycombs and designs like the seemingly wandering mountain. This points to a warm center of the planet, and this finding alone is a clue that could have extensive ramifications for how we might interpret Pluto. Pluto is definitely more dynamic than previously accepted. Land movement from heat, along with changes in surface designs, demonstrates a sort of aliveness that shows we have underrated Pluto. This little fellow shows some care as well as fire in it, and that might actually mean that there are pockets of fluid inside Pluto that resemble seas or magma offices of ice. The top of the geography team of the New Horizons mission, William McKinnon, even compared the internal existence of the diminutive planet to an astrolite the size of Hudson Narrows in Canada. Virtual experiences showed that this remarkable scene developed over thousands of years and is still very dynamic today. Could you see the particular X on the right beneath the icy mass? This arrangement was probably made by sublimation, a process in which a substance changes directly from a solid to a gaseous state, and the fluid stage vanishes. These cycles happen due to the extreme temperatures on Pluto, puzzling geographical cycles and climate peculiarities in a dead world. Christmas in the snow on Pluto. Does that sound insane to you? Well, it's a reality. Pluto truly is an enigma. The New Horizons mission uncovered intriguing parts of the environment and seasonal changes on this planet. Pluto, which orbits in the cool, far-off regions of the Kuiper Belt, experiences huge seasonal variations due to its unusual orbit and tilt. The New Horizons space test found that Pluto's atmosphere, a thin layer of nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide, changes decisively depending on how close or far Pluto is from the Sun. The changes affect not just the atmosphere but also the surface states of the dwarf planet. One particularly remarkable part of the atmospheric elements is snow on Pluto. This consists mostly of frozen nitrogen and methane, unlike on Earth, where snow forms only from water. The very low temperatures on Pluto cause the much more volatile gases nitrogen and methane to gather and fall as interesting snow. All these interactions shape and refresh Pluto's surface by covering the landscape with new deposits. The disturbances, in turn, drive other geographical activity in the form of icy development and possibly even cryovolcanic cycles. The New Horizons research also showed that these seasonal cycles are closely connected to atmospheric thickness. When Pluto is closest to the Sun, the thin light is enough to warm up the dwarf planet's atmosphere, causing it to expand slightly and rise. When Pluto moves away from the Sun again, the atmosphere freezes and sinks back to the surface. This phenomenon leads to a striking anomaly. When Pluto's atmosphere condenses, it could literally snow with snow comprising nitrogen and methane. The variations in surface brightness and the distribution of cold deposits further suggest that almost all surface features and scenes on Pluto are related to these atmospheric cycles. Since Pluto's mountains are not made of rock but of ice, which is extremely pliable in this world, the entire surface moves far more than that of our Earth. For instance, what does Pluto's heart consist of? Who might have thought that Pluto's heart isn't simply a beautiful, warm mark? In addition to its renowned appearance, this region is also one of the most exciting areas in the world, formerly called Sputnik Planum. The area is named after the first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, which the Soviet Union sent into space in 1957. This large heart-shaped ice surface extends over an area of around 1,000 kilometers and consists mainly of nitrogen ice, with traces of frozen methane and carbon monoxide. The bright, nearly perfect surface of Sputnik Planum forms a distinct contrast to the darker, more complex areas around it. Geographically, Sputnik Planum is an enormous impact structure that was probably later altered by volcanic cycles. Unlike typical volcanic activity on Earth, where magma rises from the Earth's interior, cryovolcanism on Pluto involves cold materials rising from the dwarf planet's interior to the surface. The heat sources in the depths of Pluto cause nitrogen and other volatile substances to warm up and push upwards, where they freeze and form novel developments like this one. Sputnik Planum is incredibly flat, which leads scientists to conclude that the cold surface is regularly refreshed by internal cycles. 
it's probably convection processes inside the ice sheet that shape these scenes. Scientists suspect that there might be an expanse of liquid water beneath the smooth ice sheet of Sputnik Planum, which is kept fluid by the heat inside Pluto. Scientists question whether types of life can exist in the subglacial sea, but it's not totally impossible. What role does Sharon play? What scarcely anybody knew is that before New Horizons mission, Pluto had its own moon, and not just one. Sharon is Pluto's biggest moon and was discovered in 1978 by the American astronomer James Christie. Sharon is quite large in comparison to Pluto, with a diameter roughly half of Pluto's. This has led to a unique relationship between Pluto and Sharon, where the two objects are tidally locked, meaning that Pluto and Sharon always show the same side to one another. Sharon's surface is also astonishingly different from Pluto's, with enormous chasms and large impact craters. Scientists believe that Pluto and Sharon have been exchanging materials in the form of comet-like objects.